Hello, my name is Bryce Tubbs. With me today is Kit Yi Chang. Um, she is a coach, a professional training a mentor. I'm super excited to be able to share a story with you because she's very great at helping people get started on their goals and helping them to know how to keep going. Thank you so much for coming to the show today, Kit Yi. You're welcome, Bryce. My pleasure. Excellent. You know, let me ask you this question. Actually, no, before we go any further, for those watching, if you're watching from any location that's outside of our free community, I just want to personally invite you inside. It's taking a tremendous amount of time and energy to create such a positive group of people. We'd love to have you inside and, you know, see how we can support you. Now, you know, Kit, let me ask you this question. What was life like before you got into training and coaching? What was the catalyst that brought you into the space? Have uh, you heard of Herbalife that was founded in America in the 1980s? Yes. I was introduced to this company in June 2011. Now, the company is very big on personal development. Okay. Apparently, Jim Rohn was their mentor. Mm. And we were introduced to Jim Rohn. When I heard Jim Rohn's voice for the very first time, there was something exceptionally profound about what his philosophy was, philosophy was and I found like he was the, the father that I always wanted but didn't have and his philosophy has been with me since and it's nine years so he helped me to transform my life mm. wow. the opportunity the business opportunity with her life didn't work However, the personal development side has helped me to completely transform my life from suffering from depression and anxiety, going through a bitter divorce, being a single working mother to three young sons. I didn't get any financial help from their dad. I was doing it all on my own financially. Mm -hmm. My big brother was there with us to help me with the everyday chores and babysitting my youngest one who was only two and a half three years old that was only support that I got every single day but I felt like a victim Bryce oh, poor miserable me why is this happening to me why am I so stuck in this rut I felt like a victim mm -hmm. so from hearing Jim Rohn's advice his guidance his philosophy he taught me to take responsibility and do something with my life and I quote he said for things to change you must change and I thought wow that's profound if I wanted to change how my life was I needed to change and mainly about the way I was thinking so I needed to get out of the poor miserable me mentality Bryce and that's what I did I took full responsibility for why I was in the way that I was and in, in the rut that I was. I wasn't doing anything about it. You know, let me ask this question. So, you know, for maybe for someone who's watching who might be in, in a similar rut, you know, what would be like the first piece of advice that you give to them to start changing their mindset? I would advise them to get clear as to what it is that they were because people are very good at telling you what they don't want when they complain when they're moaning when they're ranting and raving oh i'm pissed off with this or oh, that makes me angry or oh, i hate this okay great you're telling me what you don't want now let's focus on what you do want and this is where people struggle because i struggled with it myself right so we needed to change the way we think and take a focus away from what we don't want Mm. to the things that we do want and when we get into adult life we really get asked so what is it that you want Bryce well I was never asked when I became an adult what is it that you want Kit because we're constantly told you should be this you should be that you shouldn't do this you shouldn't do that or you mustn't be that way because society has conditioned us to be a certain way, a certain shape, we have to sound a certain way, talk a certain way, appear a certain way, we, we lose our authentic self. Mm -hmm. we, we neglect to focus on what we want. So we're constantly complaining about what we don't want. So, okay, so you don't want all this. Right, great. 
could you tell me what it is that you do want? That's where they struggle because I was there myself. I didn't know what I want. I really struggled with that. And Jim Rohn helped me to focus on what I did want, which was to set goals, small goals, everyday goals that I could achieve, i.e. change something in here, which was to get out of the victim mentality. For example, instead of thinking, oh, poor miserable me, I focused on what I could give to people, not money, of course, give people as in my time, mm. my help, my guidance, or just a listening ear to say, I'm here to listen to you. Now, these things are priceless. You can't buy that with money. And gradually I thought, my goodness, I have so much good in my life. I was constantly focusing on the things that I didn't want. How draining and exhausting was that? I was toxic. Wow. Yeah. You know, so, so let me ask you this question. So after you kind of set those goals, now is the reason why we have to be clear so now we know exactly what we want and does that make it easier to go get those things or? Absolutely. If you don't have clarity on what it is that you do want, then you will be constantly focusing on what you don't want. I.e. the complaining, the moaning, the ranting, it just goes on and on like a vicious cycle. It never ends. Mm. So you have to get out of the negative mindset and instill a positive mindset. You know, just kind of thinking about, you know, right now we're in a great time for that kind of reframing and positivity because, you know, we're in this quarantine for many of us who are, some are in it, some are out, some are going back in. Maybe what's one of your greatest, um, you know, positive takeaways from this time? I think it's certainly all the uncertainties that we're, we are thrust upon where we have no idea when this is going to end. We have no idea if we're going to live through this because I could die from it tomorrow. Who knows? Mm. Uh, my family could die from it tomorrow. There's no guarantee that we're going to live through this and get through it alive. So I'm very grateful that my family are alive and safe throughout this entire pandemic my loved ones my family my friends they're all alive they're safe and i think that's the most precious thing that we could take from this entire pandemic is our health without our health even with all the money in the world you cannot enjoy spending it mm. that's a good point wow I don't know. I don't have all the money in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be great if you did? <laughs> oh, well, I don't know. <laughs> you know, let me ask this question. So then, you know, when we talk about clarity, that, that kind of clarity allows us to have a vision. You know, maybe what's the vision look like for you for your life for as far down the road as you like to think or talk about? Okay, so now that I have got my clarity through my life transformation, in three years' time, I would like to have, and this is what's on my goals list, my career as a life coach and a public speaker to be well established. In five years time, I will have published three books. In 10 years time, I will be making a six figure sum monthly. I want to be making more than my, my, my husband who is considered a high earner. <laughs> Uh, so there's competition there, which keeps me focused. Sometimes competition is healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, you can definitely do that. Six years from now, yeah, that's, that's definitely, in 10 years, yeah. 10 years, yeah. You could, you could be killing that. Absolutely. You know, let me ask you this question. So I, I think, you know, over time, our, our definition of like success changes. So maybe at this moment, what does success mean to you? That's a great question because, yes, success for me has changed over the years. Let me tell you what it was before I began my life transformation. So success to me back then was being financially free, mm. owning my own materialistic things such as a flashy car, a big house, and being in a place where I don't have to worry about money and enough money to pay for my bills. However, nine years down the line from all my 
self-development, success doesn't necessarily mean that you need or have to have all this materialistic stuff. Mm -hmm. Because I live in a council estate. I live in a council property where it's rented. It's not the ideal place to bring up a teenager. Uh However, I'm happy with what I've got because I feel gratitude for what I have here right now. Uh, Even though I'm striving for financial freedom, I would like to have more. If I didn't get what I want and I died tomorrow, I could say to myself, I'm happy because I've got what I need especially with the COVID-19 situation, I don't need anything that I don't have at the moment because what I, what I need is all under this roof. Mm-hmm. I don't need materialistic things for me to be successful. I am happy. And to me, success means that you're happy with where you are. Even though I'm still striving for more success, it doesn't mean that I'm not happy with what I have right this moment because I'm grateful for everything that I have now. I'm grateful for the adversities, the hardships, the the poor relationships that I've had. I'm grateful for all that because I've learned from it. I've gained experiences that I can share with people and I, I'm able to relate to people's hardships because I've been to to, to where they're experiencing. I've experienced hardships, adversities and pain. I've lost loved ones. I've loved and lost. I've been through a bitter divorce. I've lost two marital homes. I have lost a lot. And yet all that loss to me now is a gain because it was life experiences that's helped me to tell my story and share it with the world, hopefully one day, when I get onto the big stage like Mel Robbins, Tony Robbins, and such like. So I have my own story to tell people, and hopefully they can relate to those pains. Yeah, I mean, that, that's gonna be great. Yeah, and you're already, start, you're already starting to speak and tell your story just online now, you know? Yeah, I do, yeah. Oh, have you heard of Toastmasters? I've heard of it, yes. Yeah, I've been a member of Toastmasters since February 2016. So through Toastmasters, I've been speaking about my life experiences, sharing with my members about the pains, the struggles, and the hardships. And that helps me to connect with my audience because when you share a personal story, it allows you to connect with your audience. Why is that? Because since the beginning of time, Human beings love stories. Mm -hmm. And if it's a personal one, people will be able to relate to it more because it's real, it's authentic, it's personal. Hmm. I like that. I like that. You know, let me ask you this question. So right now, do you have anything new? Like, do you have any um, one-on-one coaching spots? Do you have um, any coaching programs? Do you have any speaking dates? Anything new that you want to share with us or... Uh, not yet, no. I am in the process of launching my life coaching website, so I, I want to focus on that first before I take on anything new. Otherwise, I would lose the clarity. Uh-huh. One thing at a time. Nice. You know, where can people go? Maybe they were inspired by your story to go and either learn more about you. Where can they go to connect you, Kate? I have a Facebook page set up two years ago. That, would, that was uh, a goal of mine to propel my business. So it was the Facebook page first, then I wanted to get the website launched. And in between those two goals, I consistently worked towards getting myself equipped and ready as a life coach. So I have did an online life coach course. I've been working with my own life coach since May 2018 and I've learned from my life coach how to coach people. Uh, The last three months during lockdown I have been taking on free coaching clients so that I can learn how to coach people which was one of the suggestions that my life coach had suggested 
And the funny thing was, Bryce, I met my life coach through, through Toastmasters. Hmm. Yes, that's cool. So then you're going to get all your clients from Toastmasters too. The name be on stage. Hopefully is- not. <laughs> I want a broader audience. <laughs> well, I mean, your first couple, you got to start somewhere, right? Yeah, that would be ideal. Yes, you've got to start somewhere. Thank you for that. That's 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 always the key, right? Because in order to get to 20 rounds, we got to go and hit through it. They they call it ground forces with the plane. You ever heard of um, I think it's called grounding forces. Uh, Yep, 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 exactly. Yep, I've heard of that. That is the kiss of death for most people, Mm. you know. But, you know, thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate speaking to you and learning more about you, Kit. My pleasure. Excellent. You know, for those watching, we thoroughly hope that you enjoyed watching this, you know, presentation, this video. Once again, if you're feeling maybe socially displaced or maybe you don't have a great support system around you, come and join us inside of our community. Okay, it's one of the best places for you to be around people that are improving themselves and helping each other every single day. So if that's you, go on ahead and click on the link either above or below the video and join us inside of our community. Now, hopefully you enjoyed watching this as much as we enjoyed creating it. Feel free to hit the share button so other people can get some great value as well. Have a great day. We're done recording in three and two and one, and we'll see you guys soon.